leads police to charge a man with manslaughter. Details this noon. Nasty weather leading to some serious hail in the San Antonio area, but that wasn't the only weather-related concern overnight. Sarah Costa explains just ahead. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. New at noon, a suspect now facing charges after a man was shot and killed in November of last year. 20-year-old Rudy Aragon was booked yesterday. He was charged with manslaughter. 44-year-old Ruben Roberto was shot back on November 22nd in the 500 block of Antoinette. That's on the south side. He later died at a local hospital. Police first thought that Salazar was shot by someone inside, rather outside of his home, but they later learned the bullet that hit him came from inside. Evidence in the home led police to Aragon. It seems the safest place to be at home, yet San Antonio police say that's where a man was someone shot overnight. They say the shooter fired into his home in the 4100 block of Alaskan Sunrise. As Katrina Weber reports, police are still trying to figure out who did it. Home is where the hurt was for a man in his 60s who was trying to relax in the 4100 block of Alaskan Sunrise. San Antonio police say he was sitting in his living room watching television around four this morning when he heard a gunshot, then felt pain in his shoulder. They say he still was able to grab his gun and fire back, scaring off the shooter who was in his backyard. Within minutes, officers were there too, searching both outside and inside for clues. They did not find the gunman, but say they did recover one shell casing behind the victim's home. Police say the victim in this case is not someone known to them for having any kind of trouble. So they're puzzled as to why someone would take aim at him. Investigators also spent some time questioning neighbors, hoping for some kind of leads. The man who was shot, meanwhile, spent some time in the hospital getting treatment for his shoulder wound. He is expected to be okay. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Most of you saw this. More nasty weather for folks in our community. Take a look right now on KSAT.com. We've got pictures of some of that huge hail you saw in our area last night. <laughs> Viewers sent in a lot of images, and you can take a look at them right now at KSAT.com. That hail hitting in areas around San Antonio and inside San Antonio during last night's severe thunderstorm. But hail was not the only threat from the storm. Sarah Costa shows us the damage to a northeast side home that was struck by lightning and caught fire. I heard a big crash and next thing I know I hear this huge gigantic. It sounded like a bomb going off. Danny Flores says he was sitting in the back of his house when lightning struck the roof of the home next door. He says it was so loud it sounded like something had crashed into his house. It blew me away. I was like, uh uh. When he ran out to see what had happened, another neighbor pointed out that the house next to his was on fire. He says it was definitely a frightening moment. There was smoke rolling out from the top of the roof. The San Antonio Fire Department responded to the home in the 5800 block of Castle Run on the northeast side near Riddiman Road around 9 o'clock last night. Firefighters say there was smoke and flames coming through the roof, but they were able to quickly knock it out. The battalion chief on scene explains what you should do if you hear something like that near your home during a storm. It is a good idea at least look around your own house, look outside the windows, open up the attic, just look inside the attic, because if we can get to it early enough, we might be able to get this thing out before it gets too big. The home has been empty and under construction, so no one was home when the lightning struck. Floor says he is grateful no one was injured and says he's thankful the firefighters responded so quickly because it could have been much worse. I told the fire department last night, you know, if this tree would have went up in flames with the wind blowing and then you get the little crystals from the wind blowing, it could have ended up on my house. It could have ended up on the other neighbor's house. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Castle Hills police have two people in custody after a chase near Blanco and Jackson Keller just before one this morning. Police say an officer pulled over a BMW, but then the driver sped off. Officers tell us the woman behind the wheel eventually pulled over near some railroad tracks on Dresden Drive and jumped out of the car. And then that's when the man in the passenger seat moved to the driver's seat and he drove off. Officers were able to catch the woman who told them where to find the man. Police arrested him near Marchmont Lane. Investigators say the woman had a felony warrant and the man was carrying drugs. The pandemic has had a big impact on our local economy this year, but as we return to normal, more and more jobs are becoming available. 
The new problem is our local hotels and restaurants are having issues filling those jobs. As Max Massey shows us, there is a special two-day job fair aimed at our hospitality and leisure industries at getting people back to work. The last year has been a challenge, especially in the hospitality industry. We went from having absolutely no guests, you know, from being actually very busy, very full one day to having, you know, no guests, completely empty um, for a good three or four months. Stacy with Hotel Valencia tells us the last year has been a roller coaster. It was like everyone woke up in March and was like, I'm going to take a trip and go see the San Antonio Riverwalk. And so it was uh, the last two months have been extremely busy. And we are here at Hotel Valencia overlooking the San Antonio Riverwalk. We are surrounded by a lot of restaurants, a lot of hotels. These restaurant hotels, they have a lot of job openings. So we have just about everything available uh, in the hotel. Hotel Valencia is trying to fill a lot of open jobs so they can properly run and they are far from the only local business looking to hire. We had about 40,000 postings from about October to March of this year. Um, you know, it's a little slow in coming, but you know, we're of course hosting many, many types of events like we're hosting today. Today and tomorrow there are job fairs from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Today is virtual and tomorrow is in person at select employers. We anticipate a few hundred folks that we're going to be able to bring to about 74 employers. As for Stacy and Hotel Valencia, they are making their pitch for anyone looking for a job. We just want someone with a smile, someone that genuinely wants to be here, um, can, uh, you know, take care of guests and has a has a hospitality heart um, and uh, really just wants to uh, make it, you know, make a difference. If you have any questions about the job fair, we have all those answers right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. After yesterday's busy weather, we still do have a few more storms to talk about today before things really clear out. Your forecast is coming up. Hey, the Spurs are now having a hard time winning on the road. They have lost four straight overall. So what happened last night in Utah? Got that for you coming up in sports. It wasn't just Texas that got hit with some nasty weather last night. People in other communities also dealt with severe weather and more could be on the way in some areas. Details coming up after the break. We want to bring you up to date on that severe weather that has impacted millions from Texas to Maryland. 16 tornadoes reportedly touching down in five states. At least three people killed, including a woman in Tennessee. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest for us. Millions enduring a long night of severe weather, pummeling neighborhoods from Texas to Maryland. Power lines sparking and roofs ripped off at this courthouse in Arkansas. In Kentucky, an EF-1 tornado uprooted trees and damaged at least 30 homes. The storms in Georgia, deadly. Two people killed by falling trees, a semi-truck even blown over. And in Texas, heavy rain and powerful winds. Outside Dallas, two tractor trailers overturned. The people inside had to be rescued and rushed to the hospital in treacherous conditions. We knew that we had to help. We tried, uh, tried everything we can to get them out. New chopper footage shows homes leveled and debris scattered on the ground. Our ABC affiliate KAMC in Lubbock, Texas, was on the air warning about the storm when they lost power. Another wave of heavy rain is expected today over the Gulf states. People there are told to brace for another round of severe weather. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Taking a look outside with live cam. The storm has passed. People, though, still showing off their pictures of hail. So many pictures of hail coming in, and there was some damage yesterday. I mean, this was a huge storm moved right across San Antonio. We're going to talk more about that coming up. First, let's update you on the aquifer, and guess what? It's still going up. <laughs> Seven tenths of a foot today, uh, up to 664.6. .6. It's up 15.8 feet since April 26th. That's huge. Uh, a lot of rain. Uh, molds in a high category, 3,230. Pecan is low. We'll have a look back at yesterday. Coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV.
We were watching that bad weather from around the country. We had our share of it yesterday. Some folks had some rather large size hail. And it was so interesting how really a matter of a few city blocks meant the difference between hail damage and just some rain. It's a very good point. And the storm moved right over downtown San Antonio. I mean, this thing took a right hand turn out of Medina County right in San Antonio. Unfortunate path uh, did do a little bit of damage. We saw some large hail. First, though, before we look back, let's take a look at what's going on right now because we still do have some showers and we did have a couple of thunderstorms earlier. It looks like everything's really starting to wind down. And I think within the next couple of hours, we're going to lose the rain altogether. You see where some of the showers are. One little shower there around Palo Alto College. Everything's moving north and east. We did have some thunderstorms earlier around New Braunfels. Dropped a little bit of hail there. Those have moved away. And once these move out, we should see lots of sun this afternoon and more comfortable conditions. Drier air will start to filter in behind a cold front. And here's what the forecast looks like. That front drops south, takes a lot of the cloud cover with it, any sort of rain chance with it. We will get some gusty northerly winds, though, and it will be breezy into this evening. Here's a look at what we were seeing yesterday. This is from Bandera looking back at our storm that was over San Antonio. It was almost all by itself. It looks like a spaceship almost, but there's vigorous upward motion in this storm. Good updrafts punched up through the, the cap, and then you had the storm just explode, and it, that's why we had some large hail with it as well. Very unstable conditions yesterday, and it was enough to break through that cap and produce uh, those big-time storms. We had the dry line, and these were temperatures yesterday at 5 o'clock. Look at Katua, 107. I mean, it was hot. Hot and humid, and that was enough. There was enough instability out there to get these storms going. So we'll fast forward to about 6 o'clock yesterday. Two storms firing up there in Medina County, and then uh, they grew. One split, so we had a splitting supercell. This part of the storm went due north into Bernie, brought big hail there, and this one took a right-hand turn into San Antonio, dropping large hail along the way moved towards China Grove where there were reports of softball size hail and then eventually out towards Seguin and Lavernia where it dropped more hail before it finally died down. But you can see all the reports there 30 plus hail as large as softballs in some cases and we saw some of the pictures of some damaged cars here and there. Uh, it was it was one of those storms right now though things are quieting down. 78 at the airport. You can see the camera shaking around a little bit. Uh, northerly winds at 13, gusting to 28, and a mostly cloudy sky. 72, Bernie State, 76, Comfort, 77 in Pleasanton, 81 in Castroville, 70 out in Las Maples, and we're at uh, 78 down there in Katua. Very different from yesterday. Uh, dew points are falling off into the 50s and 60s. That's that drier air. And uh, there's a look at some of those wind gusts, gusting to 26 in Kerrville, gusting to 28 in San Antonio. 23 in Gonzales. Bigger picture here. We're now on the tail end of things. This uh, system and this frontal boundary now moving out towards parts of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama. And that's where there's going to be a ton of severe weather today. There already is severe weather. And the Storm Prediction Center has upped this area to a moderate risk of severe storms. Could be some tornadoes there today. So it has been very busy across the south and east. They're going to get hit again this afternoon. Our forecast calls for a high right around 82, mostly sunny. Northerly winds 15 to 20 tomorrow should be really nice. We'll start off in the 50s, then up to 83 for a high, 87 Thursday. We will start to feel a little bit more moisture by the weekend, maybe some drizzle on Saturday, and you can't rule out a few stray storms as we get into early next week, guys. Thank you so much, Justin. Looks good. Hey, the Spurs are hitting a tough stretch. And LeBron doesn't like the play-in game, and he has no problem expressing his feelings about it. Coming up. Another rough one in Utah last night. So here's the good. DeMar DeRozan and Yaka Pirtle back in the starting lineup. Bad news. Same results as the previous three games. And in fact, both DeRozan and Pirtle combined to score the San Antonio's first eight points, including that shot by Pirtle. But the Spurs trailed throughout the first quarter, thanks in part to the red-hot shooting of San Antonio native Jordan Clarkson. He hits the step back three. 22-16 Jazz. DeJounte Murray keeps the Spurs in it late in the quarter with a pair of jumpers, but San Antonio still trailed 31-22 after one, and the Jazz pull away in the second. Rudy Gobert wide open. He finished with 24. San Antonio heads into halftime down 60-43. Things didn't get any better in the second half. The Spurs now two games below 500. Here is your final from last night. That's not, it was 110-99 to was the final. 
So now they drop even further down. But Derek White is done for the season. Others will have to step up and take his place, including rookie Devin Vassell in the starting lineup and Lonnie Walker, the fourth. Papa has decided to keep Lonnie in his Manu-like role, coming off the bench to provide the spark for the Spurs reserves. Last night, he only managed two points. But in that overtime loss to Philadelphia, he turned in a pretty impressive performance. He led the Spurs with 23, and included three three-pointers off the bench. So is Lonnie comfortable with coming off the bench? Doing whatever I can for the team. You know, that's all I can do. Um, I know when, I, when I'm getting into the game, you know, I got to find my group, be aggressive. Um, you know, slowly st trying to figure it out, you know, continuously watching film. But, you know, I know what I can do and I know what I cannot do, but I sure as hell can do more than what I can. He's somebody that, you know, is very athletic. He's very aggressive and he's fearless. Uh, and he's learning how to play. He's done a good job for us. You know, he scores. Uh, he's always trying. Uh, he's just got to keep learning. All right, so they got the Jazz again tomorrow night in Utah. Hey, before their win last night in Denver, it looked like the Lakers were heading in the wrong direction. Once the best team in the NBA with a February record of 21-6, the Lakers hanging on to that fifth spot in the West, but only one game ahead of Portland and the seventh spot, the play-in spot. A frustrated LeBron James did not play in the final six and a half minutes because of soreness in his ankle in the night before game. He sat out last night completely, and he's not happy with the idea of that play-in game thing. If I'm not, uh, you know, 100% close to 100%, it don't matter, you know, where we land, you know. So, um, you know, that's my mindset. And, um, you know, if this happens to uh, we end up at six or fifth or, or, or whatever the case may be, or if we end up in the, you know, the playoff, uh, whatever that thing is, wh whoever came up with that uh, need to be fired. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. Tell us how you really feel, LeBron. The Dallas Cowboys will not pick up the fifth-year option of linebacker Leighton Vander Esch. That was revealed yesterday by his agent Ron Slave, admitting Vander Esch will become an unrestricted free agent after this season. Vander Esch had a remarkable rookie year after the Cowboys made him a first-round draft pick back in 2018 and wound up being named to the Pro Bowl. But questions about his durability have raised doubts. Since his first season, Leighton has missed 13 games in the last two seasons, starting with a neck injury that required surgery in 2019 and then Missed six games last season because of a broken collarbone. Had the Cowboys picked up his option, he would have been guaranteed $9.1 million in 2022. That's not to say the Cowboys don't want him back, but it would be far less guaranteed money. But after selecting Micah Parsons with the first pick this year, Van Der Esch could be expendable. Hey, and the Central Catholic Buttons taking on Katie St. John, the 23rd out at Kalig Park today at the or yesterday at the Taps Area Baseball Playoffs. Top of the first, button strike first. Damian Gonzalez knocks a base hit into left. Matthew Guana rounds third and he's able to score. Central Catholic jumps out to a nothing a one nothing lead. Katie ties it up in the top of the fifth, but Gonzalez answers with a go ahead RBI single in the bottom of that inning. Central Catholic hangs on to win it two to one. Congratulations, to those buttons on their way. All right. Wanderlust getting a hold of a lot of people. We're going to take a look at this travel boom and how it's affecting gas prices coming up in the next half hour. And a 21 ton discarded Chinese rocket is headed towards Earth. But there's likely nothing to worry about. Why experts say most of the rocket won't even make it to Earth anyway. It's a business dedicated to all things Fiesta. And when the world entered the pandemic last year, business at a malls was anything but booming. One year later, they're getting ready for the party with a purpose. Once again, coming up today at five, Marilyn Morris is gonna check in with the a malls about how they're rebounding from last year and what Fiesta 2021 means to them. Hey, you might want to keep your eyes to the sky the next few days. There's a 100-foot-tall rocket that could crash on Earth at just any time. The rocket was launched last week from China. It is out of control while it's orbiting the Earth. Experts say the rocket will burn in the atmosphere, but large chunks of debris could fall. While the Earth is 70% water, experts say there's a chance the debris could fall on land where people live. Turning to Mexico City, at least 23 people killed and dozens injured when a commuter train collapsed onto the road below. 
ABC's Julia McFarlane with the search for those caught up in the wreckage. Horrifying moments in Mexico City when a railway overpass and a train car collapsed Monday night onto a busy road below, killing at least 23 people, including children, and wounding more than 60 others. Two train cars seen hanging precariously off the collapsed structure, some passengers trapped in the hanging train. One car caught in a crush under the debris. Desperate family members trying to reach their loved ones. This man searching for his sister. He says she uses this line and hasn't answered her phone since last night. Rescue teams and firefighters working to try and find any survivors, digging their way through hazardous twisted metal and shattered glass. Crews using a crane to support the hanging train to try to reach anyone who might still be trapped. The mayor of Mexico City telling a press conference so far no more people have been found trapped, but rescuers still resuming the search, sifting through the debris. The crash involving the metro's number 12 line inaugurated less than 10 years ago. Questions now as to how this could have happened. Local media reporting residents flagged cracks in the structure after an earthquake in 2017. Difficult questions for the city authorities to answer. The mayor announcing that the public prosecutor's office is now handling the investigation. Julia McFarlane, ABC News. Pfizer wants children to have access to its COVID-19 vaccine. The company plans to ask the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to authorize emergency use of its vaccine for children between the ages of 2 and 11. The CEO says it will submit the request in September. For kids 16 and older, Pfizer will ask for full FDA approval by the end of May. Right now, doses can only be distributed under the emergency youth authorization. Merrick Garland on the hot seat today. The attorney general will testify before the House Appropriations Committee to propose a $35.2 billion budget increase for the Justice Department. It'll be his first congressional hearing as attorney general. Not only will the hearing consider the Justice Department's budget request, Garland will also likely spend time talking about the Civil Rights Division within the Justice Department and how it will be run. There will also likely be questions about how he will address voting rights issues, particularly accusations of voter suppression efforts. Americans are buying more guns than ever. The FBI says it conducted more than 3.5 million gun-related background checks last month. That marks a 20 percent increase over the same period last year. The National Shooting Sports Foundation, which cross-references checks with actual purchases, says more guns were sold last month than any April on record. The spike in gun sales is thought to be fueled by fears about looming gun control legislation and rising crime rates. The top selling state for guns so far this year, Illinois. Look at outside with live cam. There's some sun out there. Plenty of great weather to clean up your yard from last night. <laughs> what? You're, oh, wow. <laughs> we to go to work. It needs some time to clean up. And, and the grass, I mean, it's, it's growing really nicely now that we've gotten all this rain. Uh, let's take a look at the radar, though, because we still do have one or two showers left over, okay? These showers are passing off to the north and east very quickly, and once they move through, we'll basically be done with the rain today. But still shower there. On the east side, just north of China Grove, and that's an area, of course, that saw a lot of hail last night. This is just a shower. Uh, you're not even going to get lightning with this. Uh, this will pass through, and then we should start to see the sun pop out in several spots. We're watching our frontal battery work through South Texas. This frontal battery is bringing more comfortable air into our neck of the woods. It's in the 50s right now in the Texas Panhandle, 60 in Midland, 66 San Angelo. So this is quite a change from yesterday when we were in the mid 90s and it felt like 100 outside drier air starting to filter in now out ahead of this front there is going to be more severe weather today places like houston still under a severe thunderstorm watch tornado watch boxes as you go east into places like louisiana mississippi alabama and there's going to be widespread severe weather there we're on the tail end of things and again it is starting to clear out so we're going to call for mostly sunny skies today temperatures up around 82 degrees 79 7 o'clock down to 72 10 o'clock by tomorrow morning we're in the 50s. That sounds really nice. In fact, a great week ahead. We'll take a look at that and Mother's Day weekend here in just a few minutes. Guys. Thanks so much, Justin. It's how many Americans start their morning, but it could be the reason why you can't get to sleep. The FDA says about four in five U.S. adults consume caffeine every day. 
But Mandy Gaither reports it's important to know how much is too much and when to stop so your sleep is not affected. For many, it's a way to jumpstart the day, but caffeine has its downsides. There's definitely some health benefits, but there's also some drawbacks if people take in too much. Consuming too much caffeine can make you jittery and anxious, increase heart rate, cause an upset stomach, nausea, or headache. It can also lead to insomnia. Probably everybody knows somebody who can drink coffee and then go to bed an hour or two later. Liz Wynandy, a registered dietitian at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center, says caffeine affects people differently. So how much is too much can vary person to person, depending on body weight, medications, and sensitivity. Not drinking ca coffee after uh, noon, around 12 p.m., is a good idea to make sure that it's out of a person's system almost entirely by the time they go to bed. For healthy adults, the FDA recommends no more than 400 milligrams a day. That's about four or five cups of coffee. My Nandy says it should be spread out, not consumed in one sitting. And if you think you're taking in too much, cut back gradually. So maybe tapering down over a week is ideal. If someone decides to go cold turkey, it's, it's really, you know, most people are gonna have a headache, they'll have some increased drowsiness, but usually that only lasts for a couple of days. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Many people in the midst of spring allergy misery, but if you also wrestle with ragweed in the fall, you'll want to start seeking relief now. That's according to Cleveland Clinic allergist, Dr. Sandra Hong. If you get really bad fall allergies, this would be the time that I would have you start seeing an allergist to get started with the ragweed therapy. Oral immunotherapy tablets for ragweed have been available for years now. The tablets need to be taken about three months before your allergy season begins in order to build up immunity and lessen symptoms. They work the same way allergy shots do. They give you small doses of the allergen so your body gets used to it. And when taken daily, your body will react to the allergen less, greatly reducing or eliminating symptoms. The tiny tablets dissolve under your tongue and are taken daily prior to and during your allergy season. Oral immunotherapy tablets are also available for summer grass allergies and indoor dust mite allergies. People in the U.S. are packing their bags and heading out. What's behind the increase in travel? Still ahead. An actor makes his feature directing debut while starring in a family fantasy adventure, a preview of The Waterman, coming up in the spotlight. Lowe's wants to hire 50,000 people. How candidates can receive offers on the spot. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather, streaming free on KSAT TV. This is your daily tech and business briefing from Cheddar News. Tyson Foods announcing their own line of vegan burgers and sausages. Now they'll soon roll out their faux burgers and ground beef products under their Raised and Rooted brand. Tyson also going to debut new bratwurst and Italian sausages also. The move no doubt will put pressure on Beyond Meat and Impossible Foods. This is the faux meat wars continue to heat up. Meanwhile, Robinhood says they brought in a record amount of trading revenue in the first quarter of 2021. According to an SEC filing, the platform raked in over $330 million dollars from client trades. The number is up significantly from their first quarter of 2020. This is when they brought in roughly $90 million. The success is part and due to the surge of activity that Robinhood saw earlier this year, fueled by those popular meme stocks. And Google inking a deal with the WNBA. They're going to be the presenting sponsor of their games this season. The multi-year deal will make Google the official partner of the league. This in honor of their 25th season. The tech giant, one of several companies joining the league as a WNBA change maker. That's a program designed to support the business and marketing operations of the league. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. If you're looking for a job, add Lowe's to the list. 
They've got them. The Home Improvement Store says it is now planning to hire upwards of 50,000 employees. Today, stores nationwide are hiring from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Candidates can interview and put in applications right there and then. And they even have the potential of receiving offers on the spot. The company is looking for seasonal, part-time, and full-time workers. It comes as summer nears, continuing the busiest season for home improvement projects. Diamonds aren't just a girl's best friend anymore. That's because Tiffany and Company is releasing its first men's engagement ring. It comes in platinum and titanium designs with a diamond in the center. The jeweler is naming it after its founder, Charles Lewis Tiffany. He introduced the company's iconic women's engagement ring back in 1886. The men's ring will be available at Tiffany's in New York this month. After more than a year of limited travel or no travel at all, a record number of people are now gearing up to go on vacation and maybe even visit their loved ones. If it means bringing the hand sanitizer and masks, and as CNN's Mandy Gaither reports, that demand is raising prices whether you're traveling on the road or in the skies. With COVID-19 cases down in much of the U.S., that travel boom experts have been predicting is here, and it's not even summer yet. A record number of people are driving and flying places. As more and more Americans get vaccinated, there's just a larger consumer confidence in terms of travel, and we're seeing that already. And gas prices are soaring. Monday's national average price for a gallon of gasoline is $2.90. According to AAA, that's up one cent from last week. For comparison, one year ago, the price was $1.78. It's still different, right? We're still traveling with masks. We're still traveling with hand sanitizer, cleaning supplies, calling ahead to understand if there are restrictions in place. But when it comes to the volume of people traveling, that's definitely going to feel more normal than we have seen in the past year. People are also taking to the skies. On Sunday, the TSA screened more than 1.6 million people across U.S. airports, nearly 10 times higher than a year ago. If you're flying, you should not expect an empty plane these days. The TSA screening about 65 percent of passengers from pre-pandemic, which is pretty high considering there's almost no international flights today. TSA has reported more than 1 million daily screen passengers since March 11th. Travel experts say several things are behind the increase in travel, including more people getting vaccinated and new CDC guidelines making people feel safer traveling. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mandy Gaither. The TSA is preparing for an increase in travel during the summer months, too. In February, the agency announced it was looking to hire 6,000 new officers by this summer. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say there's still some mold in the air. What do you think? Still a little moldy. Still a little moldy with all yeah, that gonna, rain we've had over the last... It takes some time for those Man. mold spores to... Yeah. Go away. Uh, yeah. Around. It's been damp. You know, you take one with the other, right? We, we love the rain, but that's uh, one side effect. And we don't want too much rain. We've been getting quite a bit of it lately. 78 degrees so far today. 71 was the low this morning. Uh, records are 99 and 42. We'll be well below the record. Actually, pretty close to average. That record was set back in 1984. Some cool mornings, though, on the way. We'll take a look at that 7-day forecast coming up. All right, Urso, I'm worried about your husband because you used the, the phrase yard work all ago. And I'm like, is that a hint that the guy's got to get out and start doing some yard work? I do have children. Well, so yeah. it's Oof. not just on him. So it's not just on him? <laughs> yeah. I, I told him that. You spread the wealth. Yeah. Let them all do it. Yeah. She's got that chore list going. Well, you know, I'm just, I'm working on that Mother's Day gift. <laughs> well, so I might go. not ask. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, it is time to do yard work. That's just the... the fact of the matter because the grass is growing everything's greening up uh, the rain has been great we've got a little too much of it in some cases but we'll, we'll take it at this point take a look at where we are for the year 11.15 we're 2.76 above the average it's great news del rio's getting pretty close getting back to their average 4.02 austin's closing in on nine inches so it's been it's been a good thing for us we could do without the severe weather though and looking at the time lapse we did have a couple showers this morning, a couple thunderstorms off to the north and east, but skies are trying to clear out. Just within the last 10 minutes or so, we had a quick shower here at the station. Sun was out, though. Uh, it was a quick shower, and that's uh, what we're going to see, if anything, here for the next hour or so, then everything will move out. 78 degrees right now. Northerly winds at about 13. Dew point is at 60. And looking at the radar, 
They, we had again that one little shower move right through downtown. That's moving up towards Windcrest. Really starting to fall apart. That's probably just a couple of sprinkles now. This is really the end of it. And skies again are clearing. Sun is starting to pop out. The computer models do show maybe a couple of showers down to the south along the front. But the bulk of the activity is going to be well to our east. We will get some gusty northerly winds. Keep that in mind. Breezy throughout the uh, evening hours. Just a couple more pictures to show you from yesterday's hailstorm. This was out in St. Hedwig. A variety of hail sizes, that's for sure. That big one, you can see it uh, got passed up through the cloud several times and gained more uh, more ice as it did before falling. But some big time hailstorms, uh, hailstones there sent into us. We appreciate all the KSAC Connect pictures. Really helps us see what's going on out there. Temperature wise, 73 Kerrville, 77 Comfort, 73 Bernie State, 79 Holotus, 82 Castroville, 81 right now at Stinson, and uh, 78 down in Catula. Catula was at 108 yesterday, believe it or not. One of the hottest places in the country. Uh, they're going to do a lot better today. Temperatures will be quite a bit cooler. The air is drier. It feels so much better outside. Dew points are still trying to fall off a little bit. We're at 60, but I think we'll get into the 50s as far as dew points are concerned a little bit later this afternoon. And that's because we have that good northerly wind. Gusts to 28 miles per hour right now at the airport. Gusting to 23 in Kerrville. Gusting to 24 in Uvalde. So winds will stay breezy into this evening and then start to die down some tonight. Severe weather at this time is really starting to push east. So places like Houston still getting a few storms. But the bulk of the severe weather now is going to be across parts of Mississippi, Alabama. And it's going to be a busy day there, unfortunately. Tornado watch box is already in place. And the Storm Prediction Center now has them under a moderate risk for severe weather this afternoon. So that's where all the action will be, mainly out of Texas. And our forecast calls for mostly sunny skies. 82 by 5 o'clock, 79, 7 o'clock. Northerly winds 15 to 20 miles per hour. And the extended forecast, 83 coming up tomorrow, 87 on Thursday. Notice we start in the 50s both those mornings. That'll be nice. 88 Friday, a little more moisture and humidity by the weekend. And maybe a stray storm popping up on Monday. We'll be right back. 80 Family Adventure Film takes inspiration from such 80s classics as The Never Ending Story. CNN's David Daniel has a look at the Waterman. The Waterman is real. Legend has it that he's still living up by the lake, searching the waters and the woods for his wife so he could bring her back from the dead. The Waterman supposedly holds the secret of immortality. That fascinates Gunner, who fears for his seriously ill mother, played by Rosario Dawson. Where do we go when we die? and can't connect with his father, played by David Oyelowo. That's been hard for your dad too. He's just stressed about me. When Lonnie Chavez, as Gunner, meets a girl who claims to know where the mysterious man lives, his journey begins. I'm going to find the Waterman. This is something that everybody can relate to. I mean, he's doing, he's going so far for somebody that he loves, and that's exactly what I would do, and I know that you would do that, and Mr. Zario would do that. And anybody would do that. Oyelowo could relate. He shepherded the project as a producer before stepping in to direct as well. I loved E.T. I loved The Goonies. I loved Gremlins. You know, these were films that I literally wore down the VHS, watching them again and again and again. He wanted to make a film that his sons, his children would love in the way that he loved these kinds of movies when he was a kid. He was going for something really particular and we were all excited to help him achieve that. Even though it's it's big in scope and it's imagination, it hinges on that family of three and the obstacles they're facing, the love they have for each other, the dynamics that are inherent within their relationship. If you don't establish those things, all the other stuff is just icing that means nothing. Hope is a powerful force. I'm going to find him. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right. I don't think it's going to be movie weather, though. No, nah, not today. No. I think we're, we're headed outside at Market Square. Oh movie you're watching, because, of course, it is May the 4th. Star Wars Day, May the 4th be with you. And what better way to celebrate than with a beautiful, beautiful cake made by none other than Dario Ariana from Dario's Bakery. Great Star Wars, but this is also a groomscape, right? Yes, it is. So it's wedding season. It's coming out. And let's not forget the groomscape. Yes, indeed. And look at the beautiful wedding cakes here. 
How about a chance to win one of these for free? Yes. The whole thing? Be our bride. And right. stay tuned for more we'll details. Tell you all about that. Also, we need something to wash it down. And Kristen Ortiz, straight from the cantina on Tatooine, is here with Dolce Vita Tequila. And look at that, a baby Yoda cocktail. Cocktails oh. from a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. I love that one. Oh. We'll show you that and some other. Oh, Sweet. his ear fell off. Oh, there That's we go. so sad. Of course, Mother's Day is coming up on Sunday, and uh, one of our favorite moms has some great do it yourself Mother's Day gifts straight from Pinterest. And don't forget, I know this is Star Wars Day, but it's also Cinco de Mayo Eve, and La Familia Cortez is going to be here, and they have got some great cocktails that are coming up and some games you can play. Nice little fun game, and you can maybe win some prizes at some of the uh, some of the restaurants around here from La Familia Cortez. This is the show you want to watch. I say live.